I started dancing when I was five years old, so I guess you can say that dancing has almost always been a part of my life. My parents found the aspects of dance studio in the local newspaper and signed me up. Little did they know I would spend the next 12 years of my life there, learning and growing not just as a dancer, but as a person. In my third year at the studio, I became part of the junior competitive jazz team, and eventually had taken classes in every style of dance offered from ballet to hip-hop to highland to musical theater. Last year, I was part of the senior competitive team. I classed seven hours a week with five of my best friends and had the best last year I could have ever asked for, even though at the time I didn't know it would be my last year. If it wasn't for dance, I wouldn't be who I am today. And that's why as soon as I was assigned a documentary, I knew mine had to involve dance. I knew I wanted to share just how important dance has been in my life as a reflection of how dance positively impacts the lives of everyone involved. So I returned to my second home to ask my peers what they have taken away from the world of dance. I hope you enjoy. dance when I was five and I started because all my other friends were dancing so I wanted to be a ballerina like them and then I started to do Highland and I did that for 15 years and I did that because my mom did it and I wanted to be like her. Now I'm 18 and I'm still dancing uh, non-stop and I do everything now. The reason that she was put in dancing to start with was just because of her background. Being Scottish, I just went into ballet, jazz, tap. I started dancing because my mum took me. I was only two and a half. I started dancing when I was seven or eight. I was four years old when I started dancing, and I actually started because my big sister was dancing. My mum discovered that we were both actually kind of good at it, so we continued and we both started competitive dance. I was seven when I started competitive dance. When I was younger, I didn't want to be a dance teacher. I wanted to do it. But then, uh, alongside me working and performing, I helped out teaching. I think that as I got older, I realized that I actually had a passion for it. It was something that I couldn't imagine not doing or being a part of in some way. There's a completely different satisfaction in seeing someone grasp something that they couldn't do an hour ago uh, and to see the joy on someone's face when they've found success in something is uh, brilliant. I was quite young actually when I had my first teaching job even at a young age you know I kind of had just a natural ability to do it I guess. Once I started choreographing numbers well that was a whole I love 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 choreographing so you get to pick the music and you know there's an emotional connection to it and then you get to kind of tell your story of what you see in the music. Emotion please. <laughs> Enjoy. 
enjoy the emotional moments like this. Watching stars collide. Maybe just talk a bit about like what the atmosphere is like at your studio. It's always, it's always fun. Like you always, even the younger ones, they, they're always like, you come in and you're having a horrible day and they just cheer you up and you know, your friends are always there. It was very much a, a community. Do you feel like you have another family and that you just belong here? By the end of the year, you can see them start to open up and you know, again, there's not just the connection with me, but you can see them interact, starting to interact with the other kids as well. Uh, like the teachers, like the studio, uh, she made a lot of good friends, and she still has those friends to this day, and I made friendships with the parents also. You know that you're going to come in and you're not going to have to worry about the drama that happened at school, you're just going to be ready to dance. try to get them to understand the meaning of what it means to work on a team that you're there to support each other I've got friends here that are supporting me you know I'm a part of something important once they start understanding that concept then you know you can really see everybody rallying around each other like in school there's always there's always problems there's always like somebody who maybe isn't getting one move and you all have to work together to like get that move together make it look really good especially when you get to the older age and you're doing lifts you learn collaboration really quickly because if one person screws up a lift the person falls so you you learn to work with everybody really well you become a family you become very very close and you start to help each other grow through whatever you're going through in life at that time. So one of the things I want to touch on was how it kind of teaches you time management skills. If you are a competitive dancer, you're going to spend so much time at the dance studio. Sometimes it's kind of hard to, to do homework, but just have to do it at dance, I guess. It's also hard on the weekends when there's competitions. Last year I was dancing over 15 hours a week, so my schedule was as soon as I got home from school, I was either doing my homework or I was packing to come here. Every single day I was doing homework here uh, because I was here every day of the week. And it really teaches you to time manage because if you leave it to last minute, you're home at 11.30 and you're exhausted and you need to shower and you have to finish a book report and you just want to sleep. So yeah, it teaches you a lot about time management. Because she danced so much that she didn't have a major circle of friends outside dance. Her friendships were mostly in dance. She didn't hang around with the kids at all because she was too busy dancing. She didn't hang around and get into some mischief that a lot of teenagers get into because she was too busy dancing. And I think that's great that she takes them through those years. Dance is very much organized and choreographed regimented and strict, you know, you do this, 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 and this to get to here. That becomes so natural in a dancer's world or life that it's ingrained by that point. I think that that translates into your life and other things even sometimes without you knowing it. Everyone always says dance isn't a sport, but when you see how often people train and how intense it can be sometimes, it's you're really proud of yourself when you pull something off that you know is hard to do. As I've gotten older, I came to appreciate the technique in the training. I liked the challenge of the learning. I'm, I'm that type of person. I, I need the end goal. Or I need that challenge or that I, I know I'm working towards an exam or I know I'm working towards a competition. So that's what drives me and I, it feeds me and I like that part of it. It's like anything that you learn how to do very, very well. Uh, the practice, the struggle to learn things that you couldn't do before, um, and and that success leads into everything in life. So I know my capabilities, my strengths, and my weaknesses because of what I do in dance. 
I used to not be very confident with, with a lot of stuff and through dance I learned like like I said before you do that one move and you learn how to nail it and you become really confident in your abilities and then you want to try more things. It also teaches you to be more confident talking in front of people like I clearly have no problem talking to you right now or like in front of a camera because dance teaches you you're in front of hundreds maybe thousands of people depending on where you're performing and you have to just go for it. You can't be worried about who's in the audience or who's watching. You just have to go out there and have fun. I think the biggest thing would be confidence. I think that's probably the number one. Uh, you know, I've had students come in that wouldn't even speak to me, barely. And then after you've faced many challenges in the dance studio, and physical challenges, mental challenges, you know, you're building that confidence as you go along, then when you go out into the world, it's a whole different feeling about yourself. You, you look at everything differently and you take on things differently. The biggest thing that I've seen, especially from small uh, children, is the, is the confidence. Uh, it's a completely di different level of communication when you're dancing. You don't have to speak up loud um, and you don't have to put your hand up. You just are developing personally and then you can show it off without having to sort of scream. So, yeah, a bit of confidence in, in, in all people, uh, types of people. And the last thing I was going to ask you is what would you would tell someone who has like a negative view of dance ballads? It's hard to convince someone who, who thinks that way because that means that they're a, a little bit small-minded in, in that already. But to see it as an art form rather than just shaking your hips and swinging your arms around. As a parent, you might look at competitive dance and think it's all about comparing body image or keeping a girl looking a certain way or it's all about being pretty or, you know. Once somebody has an idea of what it's about until you actually experience it, it it's not like that at all. It, um, I think it welcomes many different, you know, body types and many different personalities. I think, to, I would tell them just to try it, like you really, every kid needs to experience the arts in some way, in my opinion, throughout their life. Um, I think that it's so crucial, you learn so many things that you wouldn't learn in other things. You learn time management, you learn organization, you learn collaboration, like all those learning skills your kids have, they're exactly what you learn in dance. If they haven't tried it before, then they don't actually know what dance is, so they need to try it before they can have their own thoughts about it. Here, a lot of young women talking about not putting their girls into dance because it's a girl's thing. And I don't think they realize the, the energy, the fitness level of a dancer. I don't think half of them realize what the fitness of a dancer is. Uh, dance comes from inside, not just from your fingers and your toes. Um, and honestly, if someone said that to me, I'd say go and try it. <laughs> go and do it yourself and then you'll see. It's a lifelong memory that you remember through your whole life. Like I know people who say, oh, I danced when I was five. People always say that. And it's like because they remember dancing when they were five. They don't necessarily remember playing soccer or playing baseball, but they remember the dance. They remember wearing the tutus and running around on stage. Dance has taught me that you have to live in the moment. You can't if you hurt yourself three years ago, three days ago, a day ago, a minute ago, you have to keep on going. I think it's taught me to like, regardless of what happens, just keep going. Because you can't stop and rewind and start over when you're dancing. You just have to keep going. And it teaches you to be creative. I think a lot of the times dance challenges you to push outside your comfort zone and just create new things. Just the moment when I go for an interview, I go for the dance. That is how I handle my interviews. I just walk on stage. Dance has like shaped who I am as a person. Like if I, I think if I hadn't done dance, I wouldn't have gone into theater. I wouldn't have started acting and singing. Um, I probably would have been in sports, <laughs> which is not like whatsoever. I'm not a sport, sporty person. Um, so it's definitely shaped who I am as a person uh, because without dance, I definitely wouldn't be 